Now that you got back to your computer, the splashes are simulated and it should be looking a bit like this one. When you're seeing, uh, I renamed that to Good Flute Splash Crest. And um, if I deselect this, you can see that the gray particles are my, my splash particles. I reselect them. And they can see the splashes have simulated. So we go to um, frame 245. And uh, let's see how our splashes are looking in motion. Oh, well, it's still a, a still image, but the, the splashes that are suitable for our motion. Oh, that's, that's nice. Oh, they are created right the way I wanted them to be. At the at the edges, at the borders of, of the of the wave. Very nice. Wow. Uh, playing around with, along with the camera is not something that is very funny with the grid fluid on. Alright, I think uh, we're fine with the splash. So if you if you'd like to you could uh, uh, do a video preview in order to see if um, the splashes are fine for you. So, in order to do so, you can go to the playback and wait until this is rendered and say video preview. This will create a video preview of the frame range stopping at the value you entered there. I highly recommend you to do so because uh, you never know what you've been simulating in the last hour so always make a video preview of the of your simulation otherwise it's uh, you, you cannot um, estimate um, if the if the stuff's moving too fast or too slow if it's looking realistic or like on the moon and um, if it's your taste or if it's not your taste in the end in the end if you're doing this for a job well there there is always a supervisor or a director or someone else is telling you in the final instance that he wants something to be faster or not so fast but it's your creative task to um, yes to um, really make the simulation in the end to really um, to really say okay I, I want it that way I want the wave to look um, I want to push the wave into this look or into that look and not only when rendering but the, the motion and during the motion uh, that's very important and um, to have the splash that you splash in the way that you like, or to have more or less particles here, just depends on what what you are after, what what's in your mind, and um, it's very important. And you only can see if uh, RealFlow has been doing what you are after when doing a video playback. You know, you cannot tell from from single frames. You just you just can tell from single frames that. Um, something is not the way you want it to be. This is very easy, but um, in order to see the whole picture you have to simulate it, you have to do video playback. Um, well, uh, the next thing that we need to set up is mist. Keep in mind that um, the the uh, topics that we are um, that we are covering, um, that they have to um, always to be done in uh, the same way. So first, simulate the um, the main fluid, the the grid fluid domain. And when you're fine with that animation, add displacement. When the displacement is done, RealFlow is ready for simulating the splashes. The additional, the additional volume and um, the additional effect. When the splash is simulated we need mist. So, what is mist? Mist is, uh, this is happening when the splashes are close to and um, dissipating in the air and creating this fine mist around this wa these waves. So, mist is something that is created based on the splashes. So, this is why we have to simulate the, um, the mist after the splash, because if there was no splash, there is no mist. Of and always simulate the mist before simulating the foam. Because the foam, this is what will um, 
what we'll be seeing when one of those splash particles gets in contact with the water surface. When we're just simulating the splash, any particle that gets in contact with the grid fluid domain surface is killed automatically. After a certain, uh, I think it's directly killed. And um, so the, the foam is the, the last step in our simulation, and now we're going to create mist. So go to grid fluid menu and wait a couple of seconds and create the mist. Grid fluid mist. We'll be um, putting the, the, the grid fluid mist under the grid fluid domain in the exclusive links in order to have it simulated very well. And what we'll also be doing is create a node hub for the mist and then we'll be adding the splash under the mist because the mist container needs to know uh, which splashes it is working, um, which splashes are linked to it. If there was no link, um, it was was not working. Uh, and the gravity, of course. All right. Next thing is that we are saying the mist is. Select the mist. So mm, simulation active, so we make make making it bounded. Otherwise the the whole container was mist container. Uh, in order to be working more quickly, I will be um hiding the, the grid fluid domain particles. Uh, it takes ages. No. So, grid fluid mist, bounded. Yes. They can see the small green cube there. And I'll be positioning that due to the values I've found best for him, for them in this situation. Minus 15 dot Seven uh, oh five and the scale dot three five uh, and there we are. All right, what we're seeing is again those cubes there at the corners. You probably remember those cubes from the from the grid fluid, but in the but with the grid fluid, the cubes are inside the volume and here they are on the outside. So this makes it easier for you when you're working with the simulation to distinguish between the grid and the splash. As you can see, this is uh, quite a big resolution, and I think that that will uh, result in a very, very blocky-looking uh, render. Uh, so, I there's something like one million five hundred thousand. That should do it. You can even increase that. You can even increase that. The missed cache is not that problematic, but um, that should do it. All right. Um, then, very important for us is the strength. Say so something about eight. Otherwise, we won't be seeing very much mist. And as as in the rendering, you will be rendering the mist separately from the other elements. And in compositing, you can decide how strong the uh, the mist layer will, the mist overlay will be on top of the of the other um, the other elements. So. Um, it's better to have mist that's a bit stronger than having mist that is uh, nearly invisible and something that's nearly invisible you can not really push that into the compositing anymore so have something because these are volum volumetrics so um, it's easier to for you to make them uh, a little more transparent in a second step as it is here in real flow so we have strength of 8 
and I think this should do it. Oh well, we need some some noise because uh, mist will always loves noise for movement. Noise field one and noise field two. Where is that? Noise, noise, noise. Where, uh, this is the this symbol. Yes. Okay. The one as with five, two, and the other one I leave it at default. Add it here to the mist. All right. So now, Cray, let's select the splash, and we do not want to. Uh, we do not want the splash to be simulated over and over again when simulating the mist. So we say simulation cache. So we have the splash cached, the grid fluid domain is cached, and using the cached splash information we will be creating the mist by resetting our timeline to frame zero and starting to simulate. This will take again a serious amount of time so um, get back to your computer over, ga over again and we'll be seeing how that worked out for us.